You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Sex Pot Radio. It's Tuesday night again here in the Mile High. We are joined in the studio by Rev and Lunchbox himself. I'm excited. You sound excited. Holy shit, sound excited. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Hey. I just did a dab. Then why the fuck are you like that? Isn't that supposed to bring you down a little? It was the... <laughs> Crack dab? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> what, what's the... the, the <laughs> God, no shit. The fuck. Uh, Cracker Jack. Ja- what's, a f- what's this? Turbo Jack. Turbo Jack. Some Turbo... Uh, dude, Turbo Jack. You day. know what Turbo Jack reminds me of? Remember the movie... Um, oh, shoot. What is that cartoon movie? They all re- wear red suits and the little boy's name is Jack Jack. Speed Racer? No, 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 no. It's a car- the Incredibles? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. The Incredibles. Yeah, uh, Rem- Speed every Racer time. Speed Racer Jim Jim. Ah, oh, see. See, see? <laughs> but Jack Jack is this little baby and he's like super hyper baby. It's awesome. Super hyper baby. Yeah, yeah. Super hyper baby. All right. Because, you know, parents really need super hyper babies. I don't see why not. As long as they're not mine. Your phone is gonna die. I don't care. It's always I dying. hope it dies. <laughs> Isn't that your charger right there? Yeah. Why don't you fucking plug it in? Because that would mean that it would, would you... stay alive. <laughs> yeah, and then it won't text at random when it comes back on. There you go. Look at plug this. There's one right it. behind me. Look, technology. Here, you gonna do that for me. So on that you. note, big shout out to um, all the cell phone companies for finally agreeing on a one fucking size style charger. Mm-hmm. If you don't uh, have the same style as everybody else, fuck you. Then you probably have an iPhone. Again, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty then. <laughs> anyway. There's always one in the crowd. Yes, yes, there is. Um, I need to mention the fundraiser that we're doing at. Whoa. There's a dog. Hello. Holy, holy dog. Is that going to work well with the little wiener dog? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah, they've met well, for right. sure. And there's Miss Ginger. Hey. Yay, and Cameron. Okay, so anyway, what was I going to oh, say? You can leave that open, please. It yes. gets too hot. Thank you. Yes. With all these people, it gets warm. It gets all steamy in this in this room. <laughs> all steamy and sweaty and stuff. <laughs> they used to keep that door shut and let it get all steamy and sweaty. Oh, dude, it but gets insane on, our, on the <laughs> iDab show. It's quite intense. You've got several dudes in this room during that yeah, show. Yeah, and... And a lot of dabbing and, and the torching. Torches and and brings up the temperature quite drastically. And you get warmer when you dab anyway. Oh, yeah. So then top that off with the torches going and all the electrical stuffs. And right. Oh, I want to mention, if any of you are in the chat room tonight, we can't see what you're telling us. Yes, our wireless internet is down. Once again, our wireless internet is down. So if you're trying to contact us... Sorry, we don't know what the fuck you're saying. We can't see it. You can always text us if you have my number, but you don't have my number. Or you can call in. There's a call-in number. If there's something you want to say or if you're jerking off, call in if you're about to to blow a load. Call call in and just tell us you're jerking off. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, I was distracted. Cause, I'm confused. Cause don't. <laughs> but no, like, well, it's Sex Bot Radio. If you're going to blow load, call and let us Call hear. and let us know. Uh, you know like, let us that know shit. that we're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, no, no reason to be greedy yeah. and keep that shit to yourself. Let us know yeah. if we're getting you there. You know? <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to mention is we are still doing the toy drive down at Mad Hatter Smoke Shop, located at 1691 West Colfax. That's 1691 West Colfax. Bring in an unwrapped children's toy. Doesn't matter what age group it is. We could use pretty much anything. They're being donated to the Denver Rescue Mission. I've added some prizes to the raffle. You drop off a toy, you get a raffle ticket. We've got a few pieces from the Colorado Project. T-shirts, um, stickers. We have a Nate Myers dry piece coming in. Tricky donated tea vape. We got all kinds of shit. So come win some stuff. And I think they can do it. Yeah, they can drop off toys at the other shop, too. I don't think there's a box or anything. Just give it to the guys, and they'll take care of it. Tell and if they look surprised, just just look all angry and throw it at them <laughs> and run. <laughs> just go in there and throw a naked Barbie at them. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Jenny said you're taking toys for kids. Here. Have it. 
<laughs> craziness anyway you, so that's what's going on down there at mad hatters we are also going to be doing a blanket drive for sex pot radio so if you have any blankets that you'd like to donate to the homeless you can drop them off here at the studio or you can drop them off at either mad hatter smoke shop location okay hey does okay. walmart still have those fleece blankets uh the for like a two dollars or whatever for like five bucks or something like that oh. i'm not sure if they still we'll do have to not. look because i know that they did before That's thanksgiving and i don't think right. that we made it and got those but still yeah so anyway the whole thing is is if you come drop off blankets with us we do have a few raffle prizes also for the show so make sure you leave your name if you drop something off and we'll be raffling off a few pipe cases a couple of pipes a few other random items um and jeremy and i'll be walking around downtown in the middle of the cold dark night handing out blankets to homeless people for you yeah yeah because it's fun Uh, sometimes scary it is kind of scary you know (laughs) <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. First it's all time. good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. As long as she don't do it. I'm not doing <laughs> it. <laughs> also need to throw a shout out out there for the Art Mind Collective. Um, Boulder, Colorado's premier art pipe glass studio. They are doing an event on December 7th and 8th. Why can I not find the location on here? If it's wrote like that, it's probably it's hard, hard to read. read. <laughs> I can't read it. Is that the Merck's, Merck's Minions show? Yeah, yeah. Where's it at? <laughs> uh, I think it's at Merck's shop, isn't it? Is it at Merck's shop? It doesn't even say where the shop is at. Hmm. Oh, Art Mind Collective, 4417 North Broadway, Boulder, Colorado. Um, it Once again, that's December 7th and 8th from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. each night tickets are ten dollars so be sure you go check that out um that is what i ran all that glass to boulder today for case ass is doing a little ex um exhibit <laughs> i couldn't like think of it i'm like the 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 okay setting so, up the colorado project booth up there yeah yeah and um so there's gonna be some cute um there's a dosher tricky case ass collab that went up there in oil rig cool sweet piece um that's gonna be on sale up there it's one of the pieces that we had at mad hatters in the case and that one's on sale and going to be for sale at that show there's also a couple of case asses peacock feather swirl locks that will be up there as well so get some good deals on those pieces they're gorgeous pieces they've been at the shop for a little while and we'd like to sell them (coughs) yeah they're beautiful they're gorgeous she's really really good at those well (laughs) the one the um the collab the collab that we took up there um actually has like the ganache on the top of it it's like in a clear green glass one of the cirque ganache yeah 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 Yeah. beautiful beautiful piece so yeah i just learned that technique uh, completely in his class nice or I, or I helped him teach it to students there. nice sweet yeah i got to go hang out with case ass today he can't ever beat that so no she's pretty awesome dude she is one of the how do i describe it she is definitely a goddess like yeah. in her own right she's an amazing person we sat and talked about hookers on colfax <laughs> <Like>, <laughs> Talk about hookers yeah. on Colfax with all my fuckers, don't you? You know, it's, it's well, one of those things that you're not always sure if it's appropriate to talk about, but when, uh, she, when she brings have you it seen up. the location of Mad Hatter's, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's we right see across that. the street from Hooker Central. Central. It's yeah. totally it's Hooker Grand Central. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> it's good fun, especially when the police show up. Um, oh, Today, oh, yeah. I, I got to throw this out there. Today, I guess a customer had come in, a gentleman, probably in his 20s-ish, and not long after he left, he called back to the shop, and Ryan answered the phone, and he asked if the blonde girl was there still. He was talking about Pup. And I guess, like, Ryan had told her, told him that she was busy with a customer, and he's like, but I can give her your number and have her call you. And this guy got so excited on the phone. He's like, oh, my God, you would do that for me? You would give her my number so she could call me back? (laughs) 
again. <laughs> and so Heather gets the number off the caller ID and calls him back later. And the guy is like, do you have a boyfriend? Blah, blah, blah. She goes, dude, this is really awkward right now. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of ways like, to hit on a girl. He's That's like, not like, right? Not calling back and being like, hey, like, I was in there a couple hours ago. Can I get your number? Like, yeah. What the hell? Leave it's your like, number before you leave. It's like hitting building. on your waitress. Or right, something. right, right. And I, it was just kind of funny because he's like, are you allowed to have personal calls? And <laughs> like, I told Pop when she was telling me the story, I was like, dude, you should have just told him that he got you fired right then and there. <laughs> like, way to say it was personal. Thanks for getting <laughs> me fired <laughs> damn it people <laughs> just leave your number before you leave don't don't call back we're probably busy and yeah. it's awkward <laughs> yeah but you guys are sexy so you have to expect it to happen from time to time at from least from time to time these things do yeah. happen okay so when but, it stops happening but when it happens <laughs> then like 12 times a day it gets annoying you know right but enjoy it because I know that you're in your 30s. What are you telling me? How... I'm getting oh, old. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Fuck We're going to only have so long. Let's have fuck some fun you. with this. Fuck it, dude. <laughs> like, okay. Guys, guys, we have it good. Guys stay sexy for a long time. No, you, you know? don't. Look at Sean Connery. Eventually, your balls dunk in the toilet. <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> Dude, why do you guys Sean think Con- Sean Connery is so hot? Like, I, I don't know. think Sean Connery. I'm not. Hot. I don't. I'm not saying I think Sean Connery is hot. I'm just saying, look at look at the the average woman, 40, 50, 60, 70. They're like, oh, Sean Connery. I mean, maybe he's not pulling 20 year olds anymore, but you know, I mean, I don't really know too terribly many 60, 70 year old women that you're like, damn, I, yeah, you're like, oh, hey, grandma, great grandma. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's. It's women just don't age gracefully, so it's like, yeah, it's like treasure that shit when you're when you're hot, enjoy it. You get hit on, enjoy that shit, because that one day comes because and nobody hits old. on you. No, well, <laughs> yeah, we all are. I mean, it's whether you stay sexy or not, who cares? I mean, just enjoy it because that when it stops happening, then what? Then you're gonna try extra hard so people do it, and then you're gonna be all sad when people aren't like, "Oh, nobody likes me." Well, you fucking complained when people <laughs> did. So now that you don't have it, shut the fuck up. So see, you can't have it both ways. So either enjoy it while you got it and bitch later, or you don't get to bitch at all. And I can bitch as much as I want. I'm gonna. I, know <laughs> like, you are. I just I was happy. I don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to here. Uh, <laughs> Jenny fucking Kush. <laughs> what up now? Oh, wow. <laughs> so see, that's how that goes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Anyway. <laughs> I, Did you? I so you're this? saying she? What? Did you do that? <laughs> Did I do what? This. No, it was like oh. that. It's okay, sorry, made I like was just that. staring at it. Confusing me. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes, I wrote on the paper. <laughs> no, but I just was wondering if you were that neurotic. I'm slightly neurotic, but not that neurotic. Okay, just checking. Oh. Hey, we've been together two years. I still don't know everything. That's good. It's good to learn new things. I sat here and folded my Starburst wrappers in the little squares before Chris threw them in the trash for me. Neurotic. Like sort of yeah. <laughs> is that what that is? Neurotic. You're just good at fiddling with your fingers. Good at fiddling with things and stuff and things and stuff. So hey, anyway, we're gonna move on here. <laughs> I don't know. I actually have stuff to talk about today, so. Nice. I know, right? We had no internet, so I was actually forced to be productive for the show. Nice. <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, since the book, um, 50 shades of gray has come out, many women have convinced themselves that if they're not having mind blowing sex, that there's something absolutely wrong with them. Wait, so how the, old are these women? Most women, a lot of women. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know how old they are. Okay. So this is this? just women in general. In general. The shades of gray doesn't mean that they're like... Right. 50 and no, like no. using Clairol. 50 Shades of Grey. <laughs> 50 Shades of Grey is just like. I haven't read the book, so I don't know. It's like porn for ladies. <laughs> like, Any age. Like, like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. See, um, for some reason, I was thinking it was like 50 something. No, it's no. The 50 it's it's more gray. about like BDSM and like that kind of stuff. Oh, like, okay. So, so okay. getting it on, getting it on. 
<laughs> but it's convinced women that they're supposed to have this amazing sex all the time. Like, sex is just supposed to like be... Like porn star sex? Yes. Oh, okay. You know, without the STDs. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> because of this book being so successful, women have decided that there's something wrong with them if they're not having this kind of sex all the time. Wait, so Fifty Shades of Grey is a book? Yes. Okay. I thought it was a Showtime special or something. <laughs> <laughs> lifetime. That'd be <laughs> Lifetime. 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 No, no, show, it sounds like show. If it's, it if it's porn, if it's porn for lifetime. girls, <laughs> it sounds like it would be something that would be on Showtime and be oh, like, okay. like uh, what's that? True Blood or some fucked up shit. You know, right. Like, like Fifty Shades of Grey, it's porn for grown up grandparents or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know, my dad, right. that's what I kept thinking. Fifty Shades of Grey Hair? <laughs> yeah. My that's dad so, used I to get know. so yeah. pissed. Your, your porn fetishes from 40 to 70? <laughs> right. Well, bang. Like, my dad used to come Excuse home me. and my mom would have Lifetime on and my dad would get so pissed. This goddamn woman channel on for. Like, <laughs> drink another beer, okay? It'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, because of this, women have started hiring sex tutors. Yes, sex tutors. Nice, dude. You heard so, me right. so if you're good at fucking, you can pick yourself up to teach people I want this to be to my fuck. new job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so basically, what they can do is they can choose from di two different types of tutoring. One of them is talk sessions, which takes place over Skype or Google Chat, whatever. And you pay $175 for a session. Wow. And oh, I want to I do oh, this too, yeah. Jenny. They watch, <laughs> you, they watch you pleasure yourself or your partner over Skype. And they give you a few pointers on what you're doing. While they're, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> that's placing judgment here. But anyway. And then they also can go for a guided session. Where the coach actually observes observes the couple or a single per person pleasuring themselves or each other in a hotel room. So hmm. it's you, your partner, yourself, no partner, and a coach. And For a mere hundred and seventy-five dollars no, no, a wait, session. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it more? Yes, it's more. Um, so basically, they'll watch you pleasure yourselves or your partner in a hotel room and give you real-time tips, advice, and encouragement. So you have your own cheer squad. <laughs> all right, all right. Say, hold on. Before all you right. say how much it is, no. Oh, go ahead. No. Now stroke your notes. <laughs> no, no, no. You, 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 you're shy. You're shy. You're shy. No, no. Feel that butthole. Feel that butthole. <laughs> oh, wrong wrong. You're going to like it. Oh, there you go. See, I told you. And you can have all of this for a mere $240 an hour. Wow. $240 oh, an hour. Well, because after watching it for I'll the first hour, you're going to totally be fucked. I think that's even more than like a neurosurgeon, like Dude, a brain I surgeon. I will watch people fuck for 150 bucks an hour. Okay? That's all they can do. You, you get to tell them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> paying me to watch you have sex. So how much does it cost to get certified to do this? Or is there even a certification? I don't think you have to be. <laughs> I don't think this would be a certification Just a good name process. and marketing campaign. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. all about marketing. Marketing. I need yeah, I need a manager. <laughs> and results. Yeah. Yeah. Results. Have some yes. reasonable results. ROI. Reasonable to above average. So we need, yeah. We need to get you partnered with the So that'll just be testimonials. You All you need is testimonials to Chose sell the that? service then. Absolutely. <laughs> so but they are saying that it's not just couples. Fifty percent of the people <laughs> hiring coaches are single. A lot of them are women that are trying to improve their orgasms or men just wanting to learn how to perform better in bed. So who are the teachers, men or women? Um, this particular one that they were talking to was a man. Um, I think women would be more fun. I would rather have a female coach, personally. Well, yeah, but that's got to be pretty risky. Why? Well, it's over oh. Skype and it's a hotel room. It's well, anonymous. No, no, it's in Skype a hotel room. That's in person. One. The other one, the $240 an hour is when they're actually in the room with you. 
Oh. Uh, so, mm. so right. So if it's a big couple, oh my god, you're a big guy, and you're a that's little woman, that's pretty risky. And he's like, you know, fuck, I'm whore, I'm fucking my girl, fuck your whore, turning me on, telling me what to do, get over here and pulls you in. You don't have a choice. You get beat up. That's what tasers are for. Tasers yeah, are the totally. nuts. That's why you. I'm like totally carrying a taser if I gotta be there. <laughs> It's probably like yeah, I'd totally be more like willing that. to do it by video, right? You know, several angles. You know, I got a video screen. Be like, yep, yep, all right, yep, yep, yeah, lick, lick there, nope, nope, yeah, touch over there, yep, right, squeeze, yeah, there you go. I'm sure that you would have some sort of <laughs> you carry a panic bodyguard button with you or something. Bodyguard, along yeah. With you, you would have to. Yeah. I mean, for two forty, shoot, you can pay a bodyguard. Twelve ninety nine yeah. an hour. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Party guard's only fifteen bucks an hour. Right. So you know, I mean, there's protection. I'm but that right, you might want to spring for a good security guard. You know. I'll hire Quincy. I I just I really <laughs> just start Johnson. by staying out of reach. <laughs> so should we yeah, like, cross the room? Yep. I can. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get one of those tasers. Yeah. The, <laughs> the maglite taser. Is that the one that shoots shit? Oh, no, no. You gotta get one of the police issued ones that you can electrify for a while. Oh, right. yeah, that shoots like for 30 feet or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Across the room. You know, that way, at least if you're getting punched, you can shoot at somebody. True. You know, true, true. Maybe not the person punching you, but it could be fun. I don't know. We should take a break. We should go to break? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Very well done. That Mad Hatter Smoke Shop has everything from space glass to butane and butane accessories, I tell you what. Located at 6901 West Colfax in Lakewood and now at 2615 Walnut Street in Denver. Oh! God damn it, Reclaim, put your pants back The on. law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at Warren edson.com dixie elixirs the patient's choice for alternative medical marijuana treatment brings you dixie botanicals all natural topical therapy including massage oil pain relief salve and our newest product dixie botanicals pain relief lotion this all natural lotion pairs beautifully with dixie botanicals bath salt for a deeply relaxing experience with no psychotropic effect like us on facebook dixie elixirs or join us at www DixieElixirs.com. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303 303- 388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Welcome back, everyone. This is Sex Pot Radio on this fine Tuesday night, and we're here in the studio with Ginger, Cameron, Lunchbox, Jeremy's here. Yep. We're all here. Yay. I got an aluminum yep. case in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bunch of balls in you your lap. Some, balls. <laughs> <laughs> some oh ass god! Balls. I, have, I mean, I have my balls in his lap. This is so sexy. Welcome to sex yeah. party. <laughs> sex pot. <laughs> we'll put our balls on your lap, not on your chin. <laughs> <laughs> 
and we'll coach you just exactly how to play with them for a mere two forty. Two forty an hour. An hour yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot the hour exactly. part. What does that break out to a minute? I wonder. Like, I don't know. Let um, me get my iPhone. And I'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what three bucks a minute or so. Four. Two ninety nine a minute. You already I want it in your to head, be nine ninety nine a minute. <laughs> Twenty four. How many times is six? <laughs> yeah, four. Four, four, an hour. four so minutes. That's cheaper four than phone sex. Okay. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's putting it in perspective. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, because nine ninety nine a minute is a lot to pay per minute. Yeah. <laughs> Every stroke counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you're doing it right, you know that's at least three hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so, hey, Lunchbox, you want to tell everyone what Fuck Utah is about? It's been popping up here and there and everywhere. Yeah. We'll get it on camera here so we yes. get the reference of the sticker and everything. I even have a couple of those stickers. Yeah. I, I want one. <laughs> that's, Two uh, Earls, one cup. <laughs> a good, good friend of mine, Nate Myers, a local glass blower, uh, was driving through Utah and had smoked earlier in the morning and got pulled over in Utah about four o'clock in the afternoon as I understand the story and they uh he had mentioned that he had smoked earlier in the day no wasn't under the influence at the time at all and was promptly taken down to the station and given a, a marijuana DUI uh for having the metabolites in his system and you know after five hours of after smoking you're not intoxicated at all especially right. a, regular smoker like uh, Nate there right <clears throat> so you know it, it was just kind of a messed up situation and so fuck Utah <laughs> so fuck Utah yeah <laughs> and Montana and, <laughs> and, um, and all the Nebraska other all my shit was put on the side of the road in Nebraska <laughs> shit dude they didn't find anything so they had to let me go but they were like little girl and like I'm 36, and like they're like, little girl, if your car, if this would have been in Mississippi, they would have taken your car. I was like, I know, I'm from there. This is <laughs> fucking like, Mississippi. Girl. Why are you telling me exactly. this? Exactly. <laughs> and I'm on my way home. I have nothing. Let me go. <laughs> God. Yeah. You know, I've had friends that have gotten in trouble in Chicago. I believe is where um, Kim got in trouble. It kind of actually stayed on her record. Followed her a little later. Actually followed her when she tried to rent an apartment, and was denied for it. I mean, this shit's stupid. That's yeah, tough. it's like, I don't know. so yeah. Fuck Utah. <laughs> and, the and Nebraska. Fuck everywhere. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> and, pot laws. and everything about marijuana. Except and for the Washington consumers and of it. To right? Have led to they're better citizens. They're more responsible. They right. do less crime and drive better and all this other stuff that independently you know they see as positive about right. it but you know at the core everybody's like no this is an evil plant nobody's out like robbing <laughs> banks and like right. heavens and shit so they can buy a bag of weed and okay? i mean like, they're literally all I'm up not. in arms about a flower that grows in the ground yeah so i I just think the hypocrisy of marijuana is just stupid. And that's that's why I, that's one of the main reasons I support it is because if you're so against a plant, what kind of other fucked up thinking do you have going on in your brain? Right? <laughs> it's a plant. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Uh, sucks but yeah I but just, hey we're taking baby steps outraged. we're taking mm -hmm. baby steps to fix this so mm -hmm. hopefully as we continue to move forward things will change other states will <coughs> I can't talk <laughs> other states will follow suit and you know yeah we got two so far that are making the headway and i think that's what's going to be the key to other states jumping right. on board is a positive outcome for what colorado and washington right here. absolutely so today's what Tuesday? Mm -hmm. uh, Hickenlooper has until the sixth to That'd sign to ratify Colorado's Thursday. election. <clears throat> so yeah, that means that we got two fucking days left. Well, I don't know. Two days. So he has he to he sign it. Do it right? So yep. he has to. I mean, to as far as I know, I mean, and it 
And if he doesn't choose to ratify the election, we have to have an entire new election, I guess. Yeah, like, so, it would fuck up all, all the things. issues. So. so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, it'll be interesting. It's, well, yeah. If he does right. nothing, it passes, but if he only goes against it, then, then it would stop it. But he could stop it, right? What he From was what saying, I understand, he can go to court, or he could take it to court. Because he, he can't not throw out just the Amendment 64's election was off. He has to throw out the entire election process, from what I understand. Oh, damn. Of uh, every issue. Yeah, because Not just, just Amendment 64, which, but all the judges, yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. has... Ev the entire election needs yeah, to be re-voted. Yeah. Damn. Other that would than, cost I guess, the, the president, city, I mean, the we state didn't, a lot of money didn't really vote for him. to redo <laughs> the election. The money that they could get from marijuana sales. <laughs> what if I remember if reading... it would just be legal. <laughs> if I remember reading correctly, Denver's already having problems. Colorado's already having problems. Really? Right. Losing or being out billions of dollars. They're trying to figure out how to supplement billions of dollars. Like, are you fucking kidding? We're trying to figure out how to supplement billions of dollars, and we just legalized weed. Right. What's the fucking problem? We've had medical marijuana for 12 years now. 12 years. Four years heavily regulated. Well, two or three if you really count since 2010, since 1284. So let's right. just count it from then. Um, so there's been plenty of time to set up the basic regulations on how to make shit work. Um, the only requirements are that you got to be over 21. Anything else? Did I miss something? Nope. Well, that was <laughs> tough. I know. Yeah. You, don't, you don't even have to be a state um, uh, resident. Resident. No. Yeah. That, that is where I'm wondering if there's going to be some issues. Tour because like people coming in, buying it, and trying to leave the state with it. That's going to be a huge issue. Because well, you could go from fucking place to place to place to place to place, leave with a pound, cars flooding in and out. I mean, right. well, if you, you just want to drive... You can buy a pound. You can, you'd have to stay here for two ounces times however many days, right? Well, if no, you, no, no, it's only one ounce. That's not. I well, think you it's could one. go to different places. Like, I think you could yeah, go to several ounces. different places and buy an ounce at a time. It's like saying you can only go into a liquor store and buy one 12-pack at a time, but you can go liquor store to liquor store to liquor store and keep buying more. Yeah. But you have a one-ounce max. That, that's what you're saying. I don't per think person. it's a one-ounce max be. per person for Right, so, but if people are coming in from out of state, it's like, say you wanted to go to Kansas or fucking Texas or wherever, just, just to go. Like, I want to go see my daughter, so I'm going to go drive out to Texas. I'm going to get pulled over every fucking time because I have Colorado plate. It's already probably that way. I've been warned already. If you do, I got pulled over in Oregon because mm -hmm. I had Colorado plates. Yeah. Right. And it's like, oh, you're from Colorado? <laughs> you got to get pulled over. You probably have a fucking trunk full of weed. So, <laughs> And that's exactly that's likely. Yeah. That's what exactly they thought what in Nebraska. Asked. <laughs> so there's, there's going to be a whole bunch of unforeseen consequences from everything that we see as good. Um, yeah. yeah. You just got to think all the way through all these. and It's going to be a disaster for a while, I think. But baby steps. And it's going to be a fight. And But if it is signed and things do start going off, um, it's going to change more than the state or the country. I mean, the U.N. is trying to get involved. It's going to change the world. You know, if, yeah, we, if so. we legalize and it starts this whole ripple, like the ripple started here that's going to go worldwide. You know, so it'll change everything that happens on the U.N. level, on international level, on national level, local level, state level. It's fucking intense. I mean, well, I think huge. a lot of the original UN policy was derived from the United States drug policy. Right. So, you know, it was been an evil and outlawed. You know, Europe, you know, their people that use it aren't really persecuted. But just like I think is going to happen here, you know, unless you're going huge you know, fields and fields of weed, there's nobody's going to bother you. Obviously, there's going to be people out there that are going to try to abuse it. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is, but... But it'll solve the fucking debt. Right. Insanely fast. But, again, so here, here's another issue to throw out. Um, the warehouse scene, okay? Remember, I don't know, I, I remember it because I had to go to all these damn uh, hearings, all these different municipalities... But the zoning issues for warehousing, for medical marijuana facilities to grow enough weed to facilitate themselves, most places can't keep up with the, you know, their, their current clients, right. much less expand. Um, and since there's huge zoning restrictions, I wonder where people are going to grow weed to be able to sell it. 
we're going to have to start building giant new facilities. Now, Colorado has a whole lot of open space, so that could be positive. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that we should fill up Colorado's empty space with marijuana grow well, houses, but isn't there maybe aren't the industrial hemp laws in there too with uh, 64 I, that I believe so yeah it legalized the industrial end of it yeah but i thought the that issue was is, is over something else. It, but well, how over, are you going to grow industrial hemp if over 99 plants still falls into federal illegal. jurisdiction so industrial hemp actually um if it will end up working the same way here in colorado as it does in north dakota which a lot of people in north dakota don't know that they can grow hemp but you can you get a hemp stamp they actually, you have to pay, I believe it's $5 a bushel or something like that right. to have it tested mm. for THC level, and it has to fall below a certain THC level okay. for you to grow it. Oh, I see. It has to be like, I think it's like 1.5% THC, something yeah. like that, or lower. A lot of good research, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a North Dakota kid. Like, you know, I grew up North Dakota, Montana area. Actually, the hemp bill that passed in North Dakota was written up by a cousin of my dad's. So it's kind of one of those things. That, How long yeah. ago did it pass? Um, I think they've had it for 15 years, something like that, 10 or 15. Many people growing? No, because it is very, very hard to get a stamp to grow it in the state of North Dakota. They, it's legal, well, yeah. but it's really hard to do it. Like there's so many regulations on it, and the fact that you have to pay that percent, that amount of money, and like it's a minimum of like five thousand dollars or something. So like, okay, right. you're only so gonna you grow have to one acre of it, but you're gonna pay five thousand dollars to grow that one acre because this is the minimum of what you have to pay, but it's only five dollars per bushel. Got it. So yeah. it's kind of sure insane. Like like and and, and do they have to they have to keep the cell of that hemp inside of North Dakota because fe it's so um, weird. Did you do much research about yeah, that? Because we import Canadian hemp. Yeah, you can't. And we import you Chinese can't hemp. Export it anywhere. Like you have to. And there's no real like. So you can't uh, sell it to California. Right. You can't. Doctor Bronner can't no, make their soap out of North Dakota hemp. <laughs> right. Unless you've <laughs> processed it into something. Like oh, Doctor Bronner's could open. A shop in North Dakota, right. and grow his own hemp and not buy it from Canada, right? And then he could take his Dr. Bronner's soap and distribute it across the right. U.S. Oh, right. Okay, Dr. It Bronner. To, it already has to be processed into the final product before it can leave the state. Before it can leave the state. Uh, so, so, like yeah. chapstick. Dr. But do you think soaps? they're going to allow you to have a factory for that? Nope. That's going to cost <laughs> like, 10000 or 20000 yeah. like, It's not going to be financially lucrative right. to open right. that business. Yeah, like and the how state many of North millions Dakota of acres also, of hemp do you need for that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The state of North Dakota also has one of the highest yields in petroleum oil. But they export all of it out of the country rather than keeping it in, within the country and processing it into fuel. We buy our fuel from out of the country. Because North Dakota <laughs> government won't allow them to build that processing plant to turn that into usable petroleum. So yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, weird. Destroy our right. forest and preserve right. our islands, right? <laughs> exactly. Gee, I wonder why our government can't figure out how to spend their billions of dollars. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, they know how to spend it. <laughs> just, <laughs> they spend just it well. They just, yeah, they just well, spend new stuff all the time. Spend it on so. stuff that they say is supporting the country but doesn't really support the right. country at all it just lines people's pockets right exactly <laughs> it's all about the dollar it is all about yeah. dollars but you know yeah hopefully that can change one day someday it will happen yeah. but hey it's all gonna end in december anyway so yeah. fuck it december 21st <laughs> i'm not buying anyone christmas presents until after the 21st because if the world ends <laughs> I'm not out any money. <laughs> yeah, but if the world ends, you don't need no fucking money. Who exactly. Gives right. <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy the money I have right now. Right here, <laughs> right now. There you go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Matt, you brought some glass today. You want to tell our yeah. listeners a little about what you got? Oh, I just uh, brought my marbles and pendants. I so bring um, it up, set it up where you had your other one. That's so awesome. Should uh, <coughs> break some out here. So you make some amazing marbles. Wow. 
I want to come make marbles. Now Chris is holding your yeah. balls, lunchbox. Chris <laughs> has your balls in his hands. At least they're my big balls. <laughs> it's got littler balls coming. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you can't handle those ones. <laughs> yeah, I, these are some of my more recent works. Oh, uh, I like that one. <laughs> the two he's showing you right now are collabs that me and Berserker did. He made the image, and I finished up the back and uh, did the pattern and stuff. See, this one right here is like uh, my buddy. Was it Sam that got it? No, it was Kirsten. Kirsten got a, a marble from you. Um, it was a big one. like uh, It was kind of a vortex-fumed one with the uh -huh. carving on the back. He had picked right. it up down at Mad Hatter's. It yeah, like it was that. like that. It was, it was all gorgeous like this. But, um, and it was who had carved the back of it? It was uh, that Carver's. That was that Carved practice. Katie? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that was so sweet. Yeah, she, uh, it was a gorgeous piece. Of, dude, this is she beautiful. Did some really nice work for me. Yeah, very. Do you very work with nice. her often? Uh, every every now and again. Wow. Nice. Uh, so, where can people <coughs> purchase your marbles and such? Um, Illusions has bought a lot of my marbles from okay. me. Um, usually, I just sell them to private collectors as I meet people. Right. So, uh, to meet me personally, like, uh, this weekend I'll be down at doing firepower at, uh, Castleman's. Nice. So, that's a good way to buy marbles from me. I usually don't bring marbles into shops. Right. I usually just run bone pipes around, uh, right. shops and stuff, so, uh, um. I, I have some more pipes and stuff at, uh, purple haze okay. and uh, smoke signals as well okay nice nice you want to show them some of your pipes yeah you know the more i work in um a, a shop the more often i can pick out people's pieces anymore <laughs> like it's kind of nice to be able to like walk up and say hey like i know who made that yeah oh that's sweet <laughs> yeah, yeah like uh sweet. Being able to pick out a Nate piece right, or yeah. a Nady or Yush piece. Yep. Stuff like that is pretty cool. Especially, I've met a lot of the big glass blowers, and they're right. just really cool people to Most know and to hang out with. Most of the glass blowers that I've met are really chill and laid back and easy to talk to, you know? I had one hit me up the other night and asked me if I could set him up with a friend of mine. He's like, you know any girls that are single? I never get out of the studio. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hard for a guy glassblower to meet girls. So, yeah, you guys are you in know, the studio blowing glass. You're not out meeting people all over the place. So Yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of the downfalls of being right? your own artist. For sure. You've for got sure. Uh, your your mind is on business you've and not much else. Do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But, no, it really is nice. And, you know, it's kind of funny because I have people, like, I'll go, th people ask us about the headies in the case and stuff, you know, and you go through and you're like, oh, this is this glass blower, this is that glass blower, and blah, 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 and you can tell them, like, pretty much the whole story behind the pieces. And then I had a guy come into the shop the other day that looked at me and said, do you have any incense burners? <laughs> and I said, no, we don't sell incense burners. And he looked at me and said, they need to fucking hire people that know what the fuck they're talking about in here. And he walked out. <laughs> and he comes back in and he goes, it's a straight tube. And I just looked at him with a fucking bubble on it. <laughs> I was like, I was so irate at being accused of not knowing right. what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> like, do your fucking incense burner. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Kofax, baby. Kofax. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming they weren't using that to burn Nag Champa or anything. Huh? They were not using that for incense oil. Yeah. <laughs> and he was angry. <laughs> Very angry. Yeah. At my lack of intelligence about what he wanted to be smoking. <laughs> I know. That's where you just got to look at him and say, sir, go buy your meth pipe somewhere else, you <laughs> fucking dipshit. Look, right? I totally know what you're doing. There, duh. Now I know, you fucking moron. There, see? I mean, just yeah. throw that shit in his yeah. face. <laughs> Call them out and send them on their way. You know, it's just irritating. Like, I had customers in the shop. I'm like, come on, fuck off, you know? <laughs> it just gets old. It's it like, really are you does. really serious? You just asked for that. Right. It's <laughs> like, how many, how many times do you have to come in and, like, pretend like we don't know what we're talking about? 
And it's surprising, because, like, I mean, they come in two, three, four times and ask different people that are working there if we have them, and it's like, no, no. we don't <laughs> have them. It says so on the door, okay? It <laughs> says in big black letters on the door, and it now says meth pipe. Good. Yeah. It yeah. says that we do not carry crack pipes, meth pipes, incense burners, glass roses, blah 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 blah. I told you, you have to put that <laughs> shit on there, spell it out, because do you put no crack pipes, people still come and say, well, do you got the bubbles? <laughs> no. <Right>. No. <laughs> the roses. Because a crack pipe and a mess pipe are different. They are yeah. different. So. But you I'm know. surprised you don't have people asking for the glass tubo cigars. Yes. They do look for uh, those, too. They look for it all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, hey, let's talk about yeah, these. At least yeah, so anyway. Tweakers give themselves up early. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Easily, too. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful pipes here. So, yeah, yeah. So these are not used for meth at all. Not at, at all. all. There yeah, is no way I to use, make this work for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only use uh, top quality American made glass, too. I Yay. try not to use any Chinese tubing. I use uh, top quality clears. Um, nice. It's hard hard not to get that imported. I think even Corning is imported now. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> but. Uh, there are countries that have laxer chemical laws and mm -hmm. allow for. That's why Cymax works so good. Is there's a higher lead content in it, and it's made over in Kazakhstan or something. Mm. And you know, I'm sure their environmental laws allow them to add enough lead to it, and right. then ship it around the world, and it's all right for us now. Hmm. <laughs> lead is great. Yeah. <laughs> Eat paint. <laughs> well, that's what allows it to fume. That's right, what right, right. That allows the permeation For of sure. the. So, how is it that you do the coloring on these pieces? Like, um, there's a couple different methods I use. I uh, either stripe it with a, a rod of color, mm -hmm. and but now a lot of the glass companies are bringing tubes, right? Uh, pulling tubes for us, <laughs> and they have good wall thickness end to end, and it's a really nice, easy, and convenient way for us to work with it. We don't have to build something to make a shape right. out of it. We can just pull it off our sec a section and work with that nice. section and, you know, make it into this piece or right. whatever. Nice. <clears throat> so I take a piece of that colored tubing and uh, strike it out on top and apply a, a mask and blast it away. Nice. So. I like these. It's a pretty basic process, but... You know, it turned the result is really. It's really pretty nice basic piece. to the standard glass blower, but right, the layman yeah. tries to do it with a butane torch at home, and it doesn't work so well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's I guess it's the ten thousand dollars in equipment that I have that. You know, it's it like a so doctor easy. saying it's a really simple procedure. <laughs> right, exactly. But don't do it at home. You just need this fifty thousand dollar machine. Exactly. <laughs> the exactly. machine that goes bing. bing. Yeah, those, for those that know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how does the dichro work in the marbles? Um, I, I'm curious how you do this because yours always turn out well, so the super even. Dichro is a, a coating process. Mm -hmm. It's coated on pretty much everything. Uh, glass has been used for about the past 30 years or so, um, especially in the artistic market. And it's a super thin film of like metal oxides is what it does or what it is <clears throat> and the coating process is so specific that you know only a couple of companies in the entire country can even do the process so right. so that's why it's so shall we say exclusive and expensive because uh, it's pretty common to see it like swirled within a marble and stuff but to see it in such intricate patterns, I want to say, in the pieces that you do is actually really neat. Yeah, and that's that's just the the uh, etching process that I use. Okay. Um, it allows to get allows that detail in there, and then uh, you know it doesn't really look that detailed when you're when you're done with it. Right. But once you put that lens on it and the uh, grawl in the the roughness right. from where you've etched off the dichro, it it transforms into the beautiful things you see here. That's so cool. You know, and you know the dichro has it doesn't stay a metal sheet. 
right it it crystallizes so right. in a detailed pattern it's not entirely the pattern or the patterns detail that you're seeing you right the dichro adds that crystallization right. and and definitely the color shift um, right. dichro means it's two colors right you know and there's trichroic coatings too where oh, it'll nice. shift actually three and that's basically the same process they just align different crystals on there in right. a way it reflects a third angle from what i've seen dichro takes a little bit of practice I've uh, wasted a lot of dichro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because if you get it too hot, it burns away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that sucks. <laughs> yeah, and, and one of the things I learned in the Berserker class, um, you you heat up the, the sheet on the back, back side of it, and you get it to a point where it's warm enough, it actually warms all the way through, and you can then flip it over and heat the dichro side, and it actually will at a point will cook the dichro on there harder oh, nice. so it won't come off and Sweet. there's a point in the temperature range that that happens right. so knowing that point because if you hit it on the dichro side before that point you're right you'll just blast it basically yeah, off of the gone. yeah and then you have a glass marble with no dichro in it yeah or some really neat flakes right. of metal that don't shift in color at all right <laughs> <laughs> which still looks cool and i've i've sold a lot of pieces where the dichro has been burnt out and people have been like oh man that is so cool right and i'm like mm, okay <laughs> if you say so yep i that's why i've quit criticizing my own work is it double ago. the price cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. make an offer exactly. <laughs> let's auction this <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Well, it's really nice to see the pieces that you brought in. You do great work. Oh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate follow it that. on Facebook. Do you have a fan page up yet? Or just I your do. It's lunchbox is one word. Okay. Um, but uh, Jenny or uh, Firepower, Jen Jennifer. Levine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jen Levine couldn't find it the other day. And mm -hmm. I keep posting stuff in it, but it doesn't seem like it's coming through. It posts on, like, my page. Right. But I I don't know. I don't you ever try You may have to... your privacy settings set to where only you can see it. Maybe. You might want to check that. Yeah. I've, I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah that... Why is no one commenting? Why don't I have any <laughs> notifications? I don't understand. <laughs> Why don't anybody <laughs> like me? likes me. <laughs> Oh, wow, that was my sickest work yet. Was it a South Park episode? You have zero yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, his Everybody dad's all mad him. because he won't be his friend. <laughs> Why won't you be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's horrible. Yeah. It is. <laughs> uh, another one of the cool substances in glass is uh, the Gilson Opals. Yes. That uh, get encased. People That's have been a, doing uh, a lot with those, and they really are beautiful. So is that a synthetic opal? Yeah, is that it, what I, it is? Okay. I guess it's a, a quartz glass process somehow. Mm. And quartz being as it has a lower COE or a COE of 8, where right. boro is 33. Um, it won't react with the boro, so you can encase it like we do. Nice. And I'm not sure how they get the sparkle or whatever in there. But, right. uh, you know, it's really amazing. And I, I really like encasing them. They're really kind of fun. You know, I've seen a lot of people working with them, and I haven't seen one that looks bad yet. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're hiding them from me, but I don't know. Yeah, they're... I You know, I watch... And I pretty much look at marbles, like, half the day. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've even, like, hooked my yeah. laptop up to the TV and, like, shown them to him on TV. Because <laughs> it's really cool when they're, like, this big. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and, and as a marble artist, I, I don't think I'm really that good. Right. You know, there are guys out there... You know, Mike uh, Gong, Just Sable, Kabuki. Kabuki. Like, oh my God, the samurai marbles are yeah. my favorite. Yeah, like, and last year I was Kabuki's TA as well. Nice. Um, and I, 
I mean, I love it, but you know, those guys are night and day for me. Just the right. their cleanliness and their technique is just so perfect. It's so dead on. Like, yeah, I I have not seen one. There's no imperfections. It's insane. I, I saw yeah, one. Well, I saw and, one the other day that had like some circle patterns, and then it was like a layer of clear, and then more circle patterns within that, and mm. then it was like these three different layers of patterns with clear between, and then a square opal like just sitting right in the middle. Right. Uh, I'm like, how the hell do you do this? <laughs> uh, Joshimura or whatever. That possibly. Yoshimura. Yeah. 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 Yeah, dude, it is insane. That dude is. I'm crazy. like sitting there. I'm in the shop. There's customers coming. In, I'm like, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, where can we buy that? And I'm like, not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Go this on is Facebook uh, and... <laughs> super high end glass. This marble right here is probably about this an big inch and, and a quarter. Like $800. And yeah, it'll be a thousand dollars, please. Thank I, you. There was a kabuki set of samurais. I think it was like five of them. It was like fifteen hundred dollars or something like mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, I want this. Yeah. This, this is what I want. It came in this sick wooden case. Like, yeah. It was awesome. Uh, Nate got a headless samurai from him when he like the first one, one of the first ones that he did. Oh, man. And man, that that's been one of my most fascinating you know I, technique like how do you do that there's those there's things. the flowers with the <laughs> skulls floating in front of the flowers i'm like how the hell like, mm -hmm. how'd you get that in there like it's like yeah. super marble magic oh yeah it's definitely kabuki he's got right? some skills oh yeah for yeah. sure <laughs> Crazy. so but that's why i think i don't i don't <laughs> you know i'm just starting <laughs> yeah but I was just starting a couple of years ago, and uh, my stuff looked nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this is this is technically eight years into it right. for me. So I had like six months. Yeah. And yeah. Then I haven't done any for a long time. It's been a while since I've been on a torch. So you know. Yeah, Chris Jetter and I years ago we started Dichrome together. He started it, and I kind of joined in at the beginning. And right. Uh, basically, I made ten two-inch marbles every night for couple of years pretty nice. much just hundreds and hundreds of marbles of all different shapes and sizes you know some right. some were long and tubular some were you know round with you know two or three different colors put together and nice. you know just fun stuff well and you know if it's not fun it's not worth doing yeah exactly yeah. that's why i do that's why i make glass overall is because it is fun right and, and the rest is <laughs> i just laugh at it it's like most glass blowers <laughs> are like i do this because it's fun for me i enjoy it yeah so yeah absolutely yeah i i don't take any of the personal stuff serious at all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i don't take facebook very seriously either i make some smart ass comments i totally don't take facebook serious don't, <laughs> don't take right and you know i'm like oh gosh get over it it's facebook if i really meant something that bad i'd tell it to your face right i had people freak out because i posted yeah. that i was getting married i got like so many freaking messages right? <laughs> and i was engaged to my friend monica who is anti-marijuana and she's like a total mitt romney supporter <laughs> 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 like, yeah. people are like, so, hey, like you're total and you're opposite. able to still be friends though that's pretty yes, impressive we are because we don't take it serious <laughs> You should have seen well, yeah. my Facebook blow up whenever I posted the Sesame Street picture, whenever Mitt was like, and cut funding for PBS. So I've got like this gangster picture of like freaking <laughs> Ernie and Bert and like Oscar and they like got like like switch blades and they're like Mitt just made this, it serious. Or something like that. And then oh my feel. god, I remember earlier I said I'm from Mississippi, so like all these people like of my that I went to high school with started like this long thread on the PBS. Hey, that's not what he meant. And da, da 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 and like it was just so I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, well like I thought it was funny. I did not mean to actually start the presidential debate on my page. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you don't like it too bad for you, I posted it. Okay, I totally don't take anything seriously on my Facebook. Yeah. It's there's yeah, this no is point. a one way conversation. If, I'm stating this right. This is what <laughs> I'm saying. Like, if you have to take something on Facebook super serious, like 
get over yourselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's Facebook. I think Facebook's a freaking joke. <laughs> like, yeah. for real. I use it for my show, and I use it to just say whatever the fuck I want to say. If you don't like it, yeah. get off my internet. <laughs> <laughs> get off my internet. Yep. <laughs> Stay off. <laughs> It's just one of those things. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Facebook's the thing that I just pretend I have a social life with. Right. <laughs> it, it's my faux social life. <laughs> it's a, a faux social life. <laughs> I don't have to leave the house to talk to people, okay? <laughs> it's yeah. just one of those things. I can interact and stay well, on the couch in my pajamas. It is pretty great when you, you get some business off of it. and Right. You know, you're laying there in bed on facebook talking with somebody and you do 100 bucks in business or you know they get interested in something you're doing and you're like wow that's neat (laughs) right it's nice for networking for sure you know just kind of do whatever you want just don't take it serious for crying out loud yeah (laughs) i mean if you want it to be serious and you don't want to see the shit i'm posting delete yourself (laughs) yeah get your own get your own (laughs) website where you didn't become yeah, friends with Yeah, that's the me. biggest the thing. Is like if what book. I say <laughs> offends you, there is an unfriend button. You know, I, like, yeah, that's absolutely. like the biggest thing right there. I think. Yeah. I had somebody that wasn't even a friend of mine say that she was offended by something I posted. I'm like, how the fuck are you even looking at my shit? Okay. (laughs) Did you just come stalk me to tell me that you were offended by this? (laughs) Like, what the hell? I saw it in a random Facebook post. It must be about me. It was something that her son (laughs) had liked and she was offended by it. It, Oh, it was the two girls in a candy cane being so much better than two girls in a cup. (laughs) And this lady is like all pissed off about it. I'm like, I don't even know you. Why are you commenting? So, so she sent you like a private message. <laughs> yes, she was like all mad. She's like, I can't believe you posted that. Blah blah blah. My son liked it. I'm like, I'm sorry, your son liked it. I went to his page, looked. He's ten years older than I am. Why are you checking up on what your son's liking? He's forty three years old. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I kind of <laughs> try to keep my family off of Facebook. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just so I don't have those my awkward moments. My not on my Facebook, you know. I'm sorry if your mom. I sometimes like she post when I'm drunk <laughs> and might not come out quite right, right. or, you know, or a little happens. too well sometimes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. You know, we all. I have suggest not using Facebook when you're intoxicated. Yes, that is a good rule. You know, mm-hmm. I drunk booking it's drunk probably booking like an actual they like need to have now <laughs> <laughs> drunk I'm booking not sure is, it is definitely but. the worst i've seen people go back and delete everything that they posted from the night before you know whatever but on that note we're ah. gonna go to a break <laughs> The Law Offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Mad Hatter Smoke Shop has everything from space glass to butane and butane accessories. I tell you what. Located at 6091 West Colfax in Lakewood and now at 2615 Walnut Street in Denver. Oh, God damn it, Reclaim, put your pants back Dixie on. Dixie Elixirs, the patient's choice for alternative medical marijuana treatment, brings you Dixie Botanicals' all-natural topical therapy, including massage oil, pain relief salve, and our newest product, Dixie Botanicals' pain relief lotion. This all-natural lotion pairs beautifully with Dixie Botanicals' bath salt for a deeply relaxing experience with no psychotropic effect. Like us on Facebook, Dixie Elixirs, or join us at www. DixieElixirs.com. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. 
Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack Suite 110 on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. You're listening to SexPod Radio on iCannabisRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is SexPod Radio on this awesome Tuesday night. Why is it so awesome? It is just awesome because it's SexPod Radio Day. I got to go see KSAS today, and that just made it awesomer. Nice. And so. anytime <laughs> you mix sex with pot, it's always good. It's always good. All right. Sex, pot, and glass. Yep. Nice. Okay. Makes it great. Just, just had to ask. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome because you're all listening to it- me. That makes life awesome. No, I'm kidding. Not really. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) you know, anything that has to do with me is awesome, right? You know, if I was really thinking, (laughs) I'd have brought brought the one sex toy I have left. You have sex toys? I make them out of glass, yeah. So are you going to make some sex pot radio sex toys for me? I can, yeah. I've had a few people offer, but I've yet to see anything. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Well, so, yeah, I, I was told at Mad Hatters that if I had sex pot radio sex toys, that they could be sold there. Okay. But he won't sell any other sex toys. Right. They would have to be my Se- sex toys. <laughs> Jenny Cush's sex pot radio sex toys? Yes. Yeah. I will have my own special right. case. <laughs> uh, I will. Hmm. Some prototypes. Oh, yep. I mean, just in case. Make sure they work. <laughs> For sure, I I got I got some ideas. Product testing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, sex pot radio, sex toys. Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, I don't have the marble here, but I did a sleeved grawl marble. So I did it basically like I make my pipe mm-hmm. and uh, sleeved a piece of clear over it so I can put whatever under it. So nice. That's, that's how I'll make your toys. I'll send you my Art. logo. You can even put my logo on it. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I'll have something to go over to Pat Patrick McGurs tonight and right? uh, talk to him about. I need like, to yeah. make some dildos. <laughs> no, I need to make some images, some stickers for dildos. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay, dildo stickers. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I have a couple of My friend's of got a joke about salmon bread. Uh-huh. It's made with dildo. sorry oh my god (laughs) that's pretty good (laughs) oh awesome (laughs) i have a couple things that i want to talk about before the show's over tonight i was gonna tell everyone a bedtime story again but no internet means i can't look it up so anyway i my phone's retarded (laughs) <laughs> I can, I can, I can Facebook every. Did you just drop that on the floor? Um, uh, looks like it. Abuse. I, I see the lid. Abuse. You're so <laughs> in trouble. That's it. Okay. Well, what do you want to talk about? Anyway, so I read about a study. Okay. First off, I posted a picture a few weeks ago that said the more housework men do, the more they get laid. And I had a lot of men argue with me, so I looked it up. And studies show that if men help with housework and they work together, they get laid more. I can see that being true. So science says it's true and you're wrong. You're doing it wrong. So more more housework equals more sex. People People are split in the study as to why this happens, but there seems to be two general answers overall. Number one being that Couples that work together doing housework seem to make sex more of a priority within their relationship. And the other is that um, when they do housework together, it reminds them of why they are a couple in the first place, to be a team. Which I can see that being true. Yeah. I would think so, you know. (laughs) Right? I mean. Hey. (laughs) You're you're a producer. I believe everything's (laughs) better with a partner, right? Exactly. You know, exactly. And ho- housework sucks, you know. 
housework and totally sucks and I hate doing dishes. Somebody I would rather do anything else but dishes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather clean the bathroom than do dishes. I would rather oh. clean the bathroom and the rest of the house <laughs> and do the laundry and everything. <laughs> I love do, doing the dishes. <laughs> I, I'd rather do anything but but the bathroom because really, know, bathrooms. That's either. where the poop goes. Yeah, I'd rather. <laughs> I'll I'll so clean up clean after the, the food. You clean the toilet with a big brush on a stick. Hey. You wash the dishes with your hands. <laughs> hey, I I love food and I I don't mind cleaning up my own food mess. Right. It's when I'm like the dishwasher at a restaurant that I draw a problem with I it. I hate dishwasher. I yeah. hate dishes. I yeah. hate them. Um, yeah. It says that some people feel that a clean home is conducive to a more, in, more to more intimacy, and others say that working together can eclipse the spark in the relationship. Women working outside of the home find housework more amorous. I think they're wrong about that. There's nothing amorous about housework. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, whatever the reason, 72% credit shared chores with hoping in a happy relationship, which is up from 47% in the study that they did in 1990. So uh, help your partner in clean house. Just saying. Yeah. You might get more blowjobs. More blowjobs if you do the dishes. <laughs> I'll give her more oral <laughs> if she helps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems It'd like the by seat. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mustache rides are free if you just clean. Help me clean the house. <laughs> it seems that um, it's becoming less and less of a stereotype that women are the ones that need to clean the house. Like, yeah, it seems a lot more men are cleaning house. A lot more men are getting blowjobs. I think. Yeah, I would I hope know. so. <laughs> Direct correlation with the house cleaning. Because cleaning yeah. without a blowjob just sucks. Right? I mean, it really does. <laughs> oh, like if maybe it doesn't suck. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the thing. It, <laughs> it sucks because it doesn't, there's no sucking involved. Yeah. Except a vacuum. <laughs> you know, so I, the and, and that was vacuum. old. That's been old since I was 12. Right? <laughs> 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 Leave my vacuum cleaner alone. <laughs> Bottle of KY. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I read a story the other day about. I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase this story. So, this guy wanted to give anal to this girl that he had met, and she finally agrees to it. Well, he had asked some of his gay friends what he should do. Like, what steps should he take to make this happen? And they told him to use Astroglide. But they didn't tell him how much Astroglide to use. Oh. <laughs> so he went ahead and he bought a bottle of Astroglide. And being the asshole that he was, he decided to have his friend videotape this whole event. So awesome. him, him and his girlfriend go out, you know, and this is what's going to happen that night. Like, he's going to do her in the butt, and Probably it's going to be Probably get 12 bucks from analvirgins.com. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to make this money and whatever. <laughs> so he goes back home. His friend is already in the closet set up with a video camera. And they go into the bedroom. And he, like, pretty much empties half the bottle into her ass. <laughs> and then he proceeds to pour the rest of the bottle all over his penis. <laughs> oh, shit. And they're doing their thing. And he accidentally slips out. And she shits everywhere. Well, they're drunk. So he throws up on her. She throws up on the bed. <laughs> And so it's just a shit and vomit mess. <laughs> yeah. And the friend starts gagging in the closet and actually bursts out of the closet and throws up. <laughs> oh, so <no>. she <laughs> poo dick. <laughs> <laughs> so she realizes that she's being videotaped, grabs the dirty sheet off of the bed and takes off out of the house. She leaves because he's recording this. The guy never saw her again after this. He was at least a good 30 miles from her house. 
He has no idea how she ever got home. The friend that had hooked the two of them up would not return his phone calls anymore. <laughs> no So, yeah. Shit. Yeah. If you're going to do this for the first time, number one, don't use a whole bottle of Astroglide. This is too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Far too much. And, and that, that shit's like the slipperiest shit on Dude, earth. exactly. Like he's two drops and whoa, holy shit. It was basically an Astroglide shit, vomit, slip oh, and that, slide That's just the grossest mess. situation I can think of. <laughs> and, and yeah, before you do an anal, take a shit. Yes, poop first. First. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> nobody gets their head blown off with, a, with an with an empty thing. gun, right? It's <laughs> that simple. Take a shower. Yeah. Oh, yes. Take a shower, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, actually, in porns, they often do enemas oh, yeah. before yeah. they completely anal. clean. That it up. is why porn butt sex isn't as dirty as if you use a whole bottle of Astroglide at home. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't do it. Well, and that's why there should be porn a stars on the go label. ass to mouth and it's not a big deal because they know there's no poop down there. Right. They've already cleaned it out. <laughs> <laughs> Or better yet, just don't stick anything in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm not a huge fan of anal on girls. It's, it's dry. Just that it's that comfortable painful. lubricated so, vagina is just so are, close. Are you saying then that you're more of a fan of anal on guys? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it was there. Um, <laughs> Mel. No, sorry, it was there. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that door was open. You, I, had to walk I guess you didn't hear touch. my <laughs> second part. It's, because that warm, wet vagina is right there. <laughs> I know. I, I just It was still there. I love the pussy. He chose to ignore that pussy. part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I the think, way I know I'm not gay. I think everyone in this room can agree. If the balls don't great. touch, yeah. <laughs> and if the balls don't touch, If the balls don't touch, it's not gay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all gay. Oh, I, it's always been if you're the one giving. Or then you're not gay. Yeah, you're not gay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're getting the blowjob or fucking, if you're the you're pitcher, not gay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> if you're the pitcher, you're not gay. Well, I don't know because if you're if you're giving the blowjob, that seems like you're kind of gay. Like if you're getting not the blowjob, right, right, right. but that's if you're giving the sex, it's better. Like as opposed to getting the sex, so it works yeah. different. Right, oral yeah. sex and regular sex. Right, right. oral and anal. Yes. Yeah. One's better to be getting than giving. Yes. <laughs> you want to be the giver in the head and the you giver of the tail. Giver into the yes. tail. I don't know. Fuck, that's a toughie. See how slippery Astroglide is? See how slippery this slope got? Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. Got all kinds of fucked Slide up. Slide right on down this hill. <laughs> you <Yes, we> are. <laughs> Poop God, destroyer. I hope my friends aren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to learn a lot about Lunchbox today. <laughs> well, that's the point here on Sex Pot Radio. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> and I advertised it too, so. I've had that's a few glass blowers really that are afraid shy. to come on the show because they saw the episode where I tied up Case as and bent her over the desk. <laughs> oh, yeah? Hmm. <laughs> and they're like, I don't want to be tied up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to be tied up either, but I'll watch you tie somebody up. I'll even run the video camera. Right? <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be a bunch of sissy boys. Exactly. They won't because the you. person being tied up obviously wants to be tied up or else they she wouldn't She was be super excited up. about the fact that she was yeah. going to be tied up. In yeah. fact, I wasn't going to tie her up. I was going to tie up my other co-host who was on the show at the time and... As soon as Case asked her that we were doing bondage on the show, she's like, can you tie me up? (laughs) Absolutely, I will tie you up. (laughs) Yeah, I have some friends in the the hook suspension crew, and they do body suspensions and stuff, and that's a whole other level. You need to introduce me to these friends. Yeah? Because that's something that I'm very, very, very interested in. And but have not done yet. These guys are out of Omaha, Nebraska. They're one of the big crews around the country. Nice. They uh, they came out here last summer and, you know, just welcomed me with open arms. You know, I don't have a mark or a piercing on me. Um, and they're like, yeah, come in, watch, hang out, freaking have a beer, you nice. know, have some snacks, whatever. And we're just like family and, you know, hanging people from hooks. Like nice. it wasn't nothing. Yeah, this is something that I, I mean. They're, I, they're, they're, they're serious. The they're serious about it, but <laughs> you know, it wasn't like anything. St- 
strange to them. You right. know, as an outsider, I was kind of like apprehensive wow, about it a bit. Right. I was, right? but I'm really, it turned more into a fascination of, you know, they have all these fixtures and stuff to hook people up because they don't yeah. just hang from hooks from their back anymore. They, you from know, everywhere. they can do cross-legged. They can hang you upside down by your knees, you know, all sorts of crazy places. They can hang you by hooks. And I've seen pictures of a lot of different <laughs> hook suspension, and it is some of the most, uh, to me, erotic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. Like, he's shaking his head. In the 1800s, people were hung. You know, and then in the 21st century, people are like jerking off to it. It's, I don't, it's weird <laughs> how times change. Uh, I just <laughs> want to throw that out there as well. Uh, yeah, the, the auto eroticism where you just auto hang yourself. And, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. definitely mm-hmm. introduce me to these people. They need yeah, to I, I definitely here, will because, sure. uh, I'll probably go out in February and do an event in Nebraska, I think it is. They do a big suspension. Nice. Well, they have another one coming up here in December, um, late December, I think, here in Dallas. Wow. That they have people come in from all around the country, and basically you pay 100 bucks or whatever, and you can get hung in whatever position you would like. Sweet. Yeah. I've seen, I saw a video of a girl, though, Mm -hmm. that, like, thought she wanted to do it, but then she decided she didn't really want to do it, but then she wanted to do it, and, like, this girl, right? I would have kicked her out. It was kind (laughs) of like the girl whose tongue I was trying to pierce, and she, like, kept pulling her tongue out of the clamp, (laughs) (laughs) and I was like, okay, you're done. Yeah, I I went and had eye surgery Mm -hmm. and they gave me like a dilated or something, Right, but it hadn't quite kicked in. And I didn't really understand the process I was going to go through. And eye surgery is the weirdest thing you've ever you felt on your eye. You have to be awake eye. and your eyes have to be open. <laughs> yeah, you have to be awake and your eyes open. But you can't move them. And through my surgery, I was like, he's like, quit moving your eye. I'm like, I'm trying. This is just weird feeling. Right? You know, it's like I'm not trying to react like this i know you're trying to do something but maybe we should have yeah. waited another 20 minutes on that dilated right? <laughs> yeah, i didn't realize it was going to be like this oh that was yikes. weird but yeah I, that is one of the weirdest medical procedures because it is very important that you're awake and you're looking straight forward and yeah and he, you have to like keep a cross in your vision or some yeah they have the red hairline crosses across right and you you gotta gotta stare stare like right at the middle of it you would think with the technology that they have they would find a way to keep your eye looking straight ahead (laughs) yeah (laughs) you have to control that yeah exactly and (laughs) and i didn't quite understand that when i went in so right (laughs) (laughs) that'd be something for you eye doctors to think about tell them make sure people understand these things Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that they don't explain to you and you have to figure it out on your own yeah (laughs) Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> but that was a serious procedure. I thought I'd get more, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah, whatever. You would think they'd make sure you know. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> since we did talk about the legalization of marijuana earlier, I did want to talk about a study that's been going on. Um, I don't know if you've read anything about it at all. It was, I read a little bit about it about a week ago, and then somebody else mentioned it to me again today. It's about using MDMA for PTSD treatment. Have you been reading about that at all? A little tiny bit. Um, So basically what they do is, like, they take people in and they start them out with a placebo. They don't tell them that it's a placebo, and they see how they react with the placebo Ah. and see if they act like they're... Like high or whatever. And most often it's people that have no experience with ecstasy or mdma right so they won't fake the symptom right and then if they don't show any improvement from that placebo what they'll do is they'll bring them in a few weeks later for another session and they'll actually give them the mdma people most often don't have the blissed out experience and feel great about the world when they're using mdma in this treatment but a lot of times that their therapy time is spent revisiting the trauma which caused the PTSD 
which becomes kind of a painful experience, but the MDMA makes it possible for them to effectively talk about what happened and to be able to move on from what happened. Ah. One patient that they talked to about the study expressed that about 80% of her symptoms disappeared after the first time that she actually got the MDMA itself. Um, and she had had the placebo before and showed no improvement whatsoever. After her first session, a few weeks later, about another 10% of the symptoms had gone away over the next couple of weeks. According to an article in the Journal of Psychopharmacology, the effects were typical of 19 subjects in the study. In the study, 23% showed improvement and exhibited meaningful, substantial reduction in symptoms for three years. So hmm. even though they only on received, one single dose? They received one treatment, and that one treatment helped them to successfully discuss and move on from the issue that caused the PTSD, and they had no recurring symptoms over the next three years, huh. which is actually really cool. Yeah. I mean, because there's a lot of treatments out there for it. Um, PTSD really sucks. Like, I mean, oh yeah, when you some cases are really, really bad, and finding something that can help you move on from that so quickly is amazing. Because there's a lot of different treatments out there that work, but they take so much time to work. And to be able yeah. to find something that works so quickly, it's actually well, pretty I amazing. I think PTSD is probably treated like a lot of things if you can just get it communicated. What, out there yeah. and and get it out to somebody that wasn't there, you know, a third party. Right. And you, you know, like, shall I say, get it off your chest or whatever, and then people can go, "Oh, you're you're still okay, dude. It's all right. right. You're here. You're safe. You're you're cool now. It's well, it's most, all right, man. You know, I know you slaughtered a room full of kids, but right. You know, most often, you're not a horrible like, person. Most often, it's such a traumatic thing that caused the PTSD that it's really hard to express it verbally. Well, yeah. Without can, having something to help you do so, um, these studies are actually being performed in Canada, Spain, Switzerland, Israel, Australia, Great Britain, and right here in the great state of Colorado. Yeah, I think marijuana is a very good PTSD treatment. I think it for sure it blocks the uh, dream mechanism a little bit. Yeah, because dreams um, are so short, it can kind of click them off where you forget about them. And well, I'm thinking that you know, and I'm not saying hey because they legalize marijuana, they're going to start legalizing everything else. But I think it's going to start opening the doors to doing more experimenting and well, more studies, more research into the other drugs like. LSD and MDMA. Well, and I don't think that anything should be discounted just because you're people are afraid of it. Right. And I think the scientific value is going to become more apparent of these these quote unquote drugs or whatever. Well, the issue with a lot of these drugs is that they were originally designed for and used for medical reasons, but people abused it. And when pe when they realized that it was being abused and that in right. the manner that it was, like everything, they shunned knee -jerk, it. Knee-jerk reaction. Right. It's like, oh, we can't have this at all. It, it's evil. It's horrible. Right. You know, now, now a plant's as bad as a machine gun. Right, absolutely. <laughs> well, and the scary thing is, is that, you know, like meth was designed f for medical reasons. Yeah. It was, I mean, you can't march... 400,000 people 400 miles in four days without meth. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But then it started being abused, and they started making it illegal, and then people found a way to make it at home, in their basement, right. in their garage, and they're hurting themselves, mm. where they could have gotten in a pure, cleaner form had it just right, stayed the way it was. Don't go That's crazy. All the good chemists got arrested. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they did. <laughs> so people are stealing anhydrous and buying amphetamines and making crap at home. Yeah, whatever that turns out to be. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, seriously, whoever thought, hey, like, there's some fertilizer in that tank out there. And, like, anhydrous tanks. Hey, my friend tanks, did this chemist once. Right. And he described this formula to me. I he think told me it was it. in it. This is what's in it. I don't know how much of what. <laughs> right. But this is what's in it, okay? Yep. And so, like, we need to go break into one of those propane tank-looking things out there on that farm. I heard it's fertilizer, but... You know, it's anhydrous. Yeah. We're going to yeah. use it. Yep. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. They got out. 
Got to go out there stealing sheep licks and stuff. Yep. And some anhydrous <laughs> ammonia. Yes, sir. <laughs> squeaker's best friend. I, I need to keep this here in a jar. <laughs> it's not going to stay in We're, the jar, so we need to use it right away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, we oh just warm it on the stove a little bit. And it's crazy now because farmers have to account for every ounce of anhydrous <laughs> ammonia on their farm. So you're out there spraying your crops with fertilizer, and you have to account for every drop of that fertilizer. I know. That's like a dispensary having to account for every gram of its freaking weed. It's it like, totally is. Okay. I gave that guy a 7.2 bag today. Now, exactly. this guy gets a 7.1 and this guy gets a 7.3 or whatever. And oh, crap. Now I'm freaking three grams off. Holy shit. That's right? 10 bucks. And now the state's going to want to know what that exactly. extra gram went. Oh, fuck. It was a stem, man. It was a stem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I threw it away. <laughs> But yeah, no, there's like a gauge on the, the tank and there's locks and there's like, there's yeah. two different locks and you have to measure that shit. It's, it's amazing. The regulation. And it evaporates. Make, <laughs> so right. you have to like know how much evaporated. <laughs> well, and then you're, and then you're spraying it on your field. It's yep. going into the atmosphere. Exactly. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I must've sprayed that extra ounce. Sorry. And it seems to me that a product <laughs> that they use in methamphetamines would be a great product to be spraying on your vegetables. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? I think it's because anhydrous ammonia is uh, pure nitrogen. Pretty yeah, much. it totally. Or you could rotate your crops with hemp, and then you wouldn't have the nitrogen right, depletion Right, yeah, the nitrogen problem. depletion. And not have to till your fields as much. You don't have to do, of- actually, if you just grow hemp, you don't have to do crop rotation. You can always just continually grow hemp on your land because right, it re-nourishes new- the ground itself. Whereas, like, corn is, like, the single most depleting plant on the planet. Right. It sucks every bit of nutrient out of the ground and doesn't put a single thing back. Nope, not even when you chop it up in your field and till it in. <laughs> nope. Not at all. And Monsanto wants to make it kill us. Yeah. I don't know. Pretty much everything out there is going to kill us. I don't know. Uh, We are in the apocalypse. I mean, kill us faster than... Kill us faster than natural... Than the (laughs) other corn would. (laughs) Right? Exactly. So anyway, that's Sex Pot Radio for the night. I think we're about had it done. I'm ready to go home. Me too. (laughs) So well, yeah, I had um, fun. Thanks for having me, guys. Night. Thank Absolutely. you for coming out. Thank you yeah. for coming. Um, I'll post a link to your glass on Facebook if I can find your page. Okay, yeah. Also, we'll try to figure we'll that out. Yeah. Unprivatize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. um, tomorrow night, there is no IDAB radio. Nope, we're doing it um, the following week because we have a there's a large um, national said. hash gathering. Hashmaker extract gathering. artists gathering there you go. collaboration. Extract artists. Uh, Ex- <laughs> the extract artists alliance of America. <laughs> America. Secret union. <laughs> Gangster teamsters and stuffs. Watch out. They're gonna be talking about hash. <laughs> it's a big hash consortium. Uh, it's a bunch of dudes getting ready together in a big old room talking about hash. There's going to be Do some vaginas dance. there. There will be a few vaginas. I'm but sure don't be surprised if you're outnumbered vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> but bring all your vagina friends, too, so there's lots more vagina. Because penis loves great. vaginas, and vaginas love vaginas. It works out great. Bring yes. your vagina on down. Yes. If your vagina needs a penis, come to a hash. Even <laughs> better. <laughs> That, vagina- that or a glass blowing thing. There's too much penis at glass blowing things. Yes. There's you know, a lot of events in this industry, whether it be to pretty much any event that you go to in Colorado that has to do with glass, weed, or hash, it's a sausage fest, okay? I'm i I'm just saying. I'm looking for vagina too, okay? <laughs> Please come. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we like coming vaginas. Yes, that's a good way to end yes. that motherfucker. Vaginas come a, first. Yep. a wet vagina is, that is a good vagina. vagina. A wet vagina is a happy vagina. Amen. <laughs> Everyone so, have a good week. We're out of here. Good night. <laughs>